Hello and welcome everyone to Defining Recovery. This is a web class collaboration with me, Ben Thompson, and my colleague, Julian Cowan-Hill. The Tinnitus Recovery Essentials, what Julian and I had, had talked about before this class, these five essentials are sort of your toolkit, where if you're doing these five things, you have a very high likelihood of getting better. And there's some work that has to go into this. Uh, as an audiologist, I did not typically get trained on these kinds of things. And it's not so much discussed in the audiology community about what else to do other than hearing aids, sound therapy, and maybe cognitive behavioral therapy or cognitive behavioral techniques. So in, in my own journey as a doctor of audiology, specializing in, specializing in tinnitus, uh, I have realized that this more holistic approach is the best opportunity to get better, the best return on your investment of time and energy. Uh, so these are the, the five essentials that Julian and I had discussed. Uh, we must have self-soothing practices. Julian's gonna get more into details on that during his part of this web class. Mm -hmm. We must use sound therapy and this is individualized. One thing I wanted to bring up on this, on this topic is that when we talk about sound therapy, it's usually a combination of using sound from a speaker in the room you're in, uh, being around natural sound as much as possible from nature or where you live, if there's natural sound around you, trying to avoid the situation where you're in a quiet, isolated place. And during COVID, during coronavirus, this has become more challenging because many of us are forced to stay home and there's not so much sound stimulation in our everyday life. So we have to use sound as a therapy to counteract the sound of the tinnitus and to create more time during your day where you can stay focused. Um, sound therapy typically breaks down into devices that are worn on the ear or sound that is played from the in your room around you. Uh, as well as phone uh, apps or sound you can play from a phone. The brain does not distinguish between, oh, this sound therapy, this sound that's entering my auditory system, that's coming from a hearing aid. The brain cannot distinguish, oh, that's coming from a hearing aid or that's coming from a speaker in my room or that's coming from the natural nature, the world around me. Let's say I'm, I'm out on a hike or in nature or something. I wanted to bring that up because people often think that sound therapy has to be hearing aids and it's not true. The reason hearing aids are popular for sound therapy and they're used for sound therapy is because they're, it's sustainable to have something on your ears that you can directly control, that others around you do not have to hear and that the sound therapy can move with you without carrying a physical object like a white noise machine or the sound from your phone with you. Uh, but the auditory brain, the part of the system that benefits from sound therapy, it does not distinguish between, oh, that sound is coming from a hearing aid versus that sound is coming from my iPhone or that sound is coming from the speakers in my room. Uh, having sound therapy can be very simple. It can be as simple as, playing constant low level classical music in the background, something like that is going to help us because comparatively, the loudness of the tinnitus is more manageable in those moments. So as part of the recovery from tinnitus, when we're thinking of what, what can we do? What is all that we can do in regards to getting better? Using sound as a therapy is definitely part of that. And if you're, if you've been following Julian or myself, you probably know that, uh, but don't forget that. Don't overlook that. And if you're finding yourself being in quiet places with loud tinnitus and, and feeling anxiety, feeling stress, feeling bothered, worried by it, having more background noise in your house, that's probably a very good move. Uh, the third essential here we talked about is mind body practices. Uh, personally, uh, maybe three or four years ago, when I started to research who in the online tinnitus world is actually helping people get better, I started to 
become friends with all of the tinnitus experts who create online courses or have YouTube channels or have written books. And one of, and, and I try to find the common ground between all of these professionals, because even though Julian, myself, some of the other tinnitus professionals online, we have slightly different perspectives and approaches, but there is a lot of common ground. And for someone who's wondering, oh, which program should I go with? What should I do? I want to, I want to optimize. I want to do everything I can. I like to remember and remind us that there is some common ground and a big part of that is mind body practices, things like yoga, meditation, anything that can bring us into a present state of mind and calm us. It also gives some, uh, some power back, some control back on your side, who's trying to figure out how to do all of this, because instead of being helpless and just only relying on someone else to help you, some consistency with mind body practices like a guided meditation, a guided breathing exercise, consistent practice of gentle yoga or Tai Chi. These things can slow down the pace of the mind, any anxiety or stress that's built up around the tinnitus, it can ease and the physical body and the nervous system can be calm as well. Julian, you're going to, of course, expand on that in your part of this, this web class. Uh, number four is that we must calm the mind as much as possible. And this can be challenging, right? When I'm, when I'm feeling anxiety and I'm trying to calm my mind, sometimes it's really hard to do it on my own. Sometimes I need someone else to help me. And that might be a good opportunity to have a supportive group or an online supportive, positive community or working one-on-one -on -one with a therapist or a tinnitus coach of some sort. Anything that can calm the mind is going to be beneficial. What I've found recently is that the mind creates these stories or these worries or these fears about the future related to tinnitus and your quality of life. Um, so it's beneficial to take something like a catastrophic thought of, is my tinnitus going to get louder? Is the rest of my life going to be feeling like this? Looking at that and unpacking that, working with someone who knows for most people what happens in the future with tinnitus and what you can do now to prevent it from getting worse and actually make it get better. Um, that's one example of how when we can take a catastrophic thought about worrying about the future with tinnitus, unpack it, get some facts, get some real experiences, talking to one of us, for example, or this web class, hopefully it gives you information. So cognitively, the mind can understand, okay, these are my expectations. That worry, that fear I had is probably not as serious as I once believed it was. That's an example of calming the mind. Um, and I'm going to talk now about the fifth one. So the fifth essential for recovery and getting better is to shift your attention from tinnitus to other things in your life. Try not to over monitor your symptoms. Try not to keep a detailed log in your, uh, in your journal of how loud is your tinnitus in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. Try not to hyper focus on the sound itself. If you're having a day where it spikes and it's loud, something that can be beneficial is to just say, oh, my tinnitus is loud today, but I'm going to focus on whatever else I would typically do in my day. Maybe that's reading, listening to an audio podcast, an audio book, or taking, taking time to be social, taking time to do other things that are, are not tinnitus. So shifting the attention, whereas previously tinnitus was the, the foreground, all of your focus and emotional energy focused on it, try to do things with, try to have habits, try to have practices, try to mentally say, okay, I'm shifting tinnitus into the background. Um, that's one example of how shifting your attention to other things in your life can be beneficial. Of course, right now during COVID, during coronavirus, it's hard to do things. It's hard to have social groups. It's hard to uh, be outside, especially in the Northern hemisphere right now, it's winter. So 
what can we do now to shift our attention from tinnitus to other things? Maybe this means picking up an old hobby that you really enjoyed, something you can do indoors. Maybe this means uh, working with some kind of sounds or watching new movies or some something like that, that we can shift our attention away.